A freak storm was beginning, and a catastrophic flood was on its way. A storm that would threaten Noah's very survival. If a flash flood was big enough to sweep away Noah's Ark and put his life in danger, it would have begun with rainfall of tropical intensity in the mountains where the rivers rise. Mesopotamia isn't in the tropics, but there's evidence that hurricanes and tropical storms could get that far. Some 6,000 years ago, it was much warmer and wetter and it would be no surprise whatsoever to get a tropical storm. We could have had ten times the rainfall. Some of these meteorological events are absolutely catastrophic, and these are the sort of events that we record in history. We don't record the normal day-to-day -day humdrum. If a freak storm coincided with the seasonal snow melt, then the Euphrates could easily have flooded the Mesopotamian plain. The Bible says the storm lasted for an incredible 40 days. The Babylonian tablets say it was seven. But even a single day would have been terrible, life-threatening. With much of his cargo left behind or swept away, Noah's barge would have been at the mercy of the raging Euphrates. The following day, say the Babylonian tablets, Noah and his family couldn't see land. The flood extended for miles. After the storm, Noah and his family must have longed for the waters to subside and ground them on the banks of the Euphrates. In fact, their problems had only just begun. All versions of the story agree that they couldn't see land for at least seven days. The Bible concludes that Noah's flood covered the whole world. But there is, in fact, another explanation. Noah's family would have believed that they were drifting on the flooded Euphrates. They would have been relieved that at the very least, the river water meant they wouldn't die of thirst. But the Babylonian versions suggest that the water was salty. Noah's Ark was no longer drifting on the flooded Euphrates. If you plot Noah's course from Shurupak, now in the flooded plain, the currents would have swept his barge downstream into the Persian Gulf. This tallies with the Epic of Gilgamesh, which says that he looked upon the sea. There's no telling how long Noah and his family would have stayed marooned in the Persian Gulf. The Bible records more than a year. The Babylonian tablets suggest just a week. Either way, Noah and his family had a big problem. 
salty water. What would they drink? Without fresh water from rain or river, their only alternative would have been the beer they were carrying for their traders. Beer is actually a good alternative. Um, and we know they had it three and a half thousand years ago. They were brewing beer. And beer anyway is 98% water. And it's full of nutrients. Most important, it's sterile. And uh, wouldn't suffer from contamination like water might. One of the hallmarks of the Noah story is that the Ark is said to have landed in the mountains of Ararat. But if there was no global flood, then it's far more likely that it landed somewhere else altogether. The mountains of Ararat lie to the north of Shuripak. Swept downriver, the barge would have grounded 500 miles away on the shores of the Persian Gulf. In the Bible, once the Ark has grounded, the story is almost over. But the Babylonian tablets hint that Noah's adventures were far from over. There are several puzzling references. One talks of the overthrowing of his kingship. Another says the flood hero was expelled. All of these references clearly suggest that for some reason, Noah couldn't return to Shuripak, that even when the flood was over, he was still in mortal danger. The most likely explanation is that many of Noah's creditors had survived the deluge, had tracked him down, and were now demanding their money back. Under Sumerian law, Noah could be forced into slavery to repay his debts. He would have had to flee the country to avoid prosecution. Precisely where the fugitive Noah went is something of a mystery. One of the Babylonian tablets say that Noah went to live in a land called Dilmun. Now that's the Sumerian name for the modern island of Bahrain. Maybe this is where he came to rest. That is where, after the flood was over, the Babylonian Noah was settled by the gods. Uh, apparently it was a pleasant place to be, where he could exist without much work and pass the time away as he pleased. If he did end up in Dilmun, then the modern island of Bahrain may have a remarkable secret. Its landscape is dotted with hundreds of thousands of burial mounds, and only a handful of these tombs have been excavated. But many date back to Sumerian times. They are the sort of place a great king would be laid to rest in. In time, the memory of a king who survived a flood could have been turned into a great Sumerian legend it would have been embellished with miraculous and mythological elements. Eventually, it would have been written down, copied and recopied by generations of scribes, giving rise to new versions. Two thousand years later, one of these versions, languishing in a library in Babylon, could have come to the attention of the Jewish priests who wrote the Bible. When they first read the story, how could they fail to recognize the lessons it offers? If humankind falls short of God's laws, there's a dreadful price to pay. Behind that moral message lies one of the world's great stories. And behind that story, we can just glimpse a real man, a real boat, and a real adventure.